Charlotte, episode 13, the finale. Bear, bear with me. Bear with me with this review because I don't know how long I'm going to be talking. I, I have a bunch of things I want to get into right now. I have a bittersweet taste in my mouth with this finale in the series as a whole right now. And I, I want to get into everything, but, but I need to focus on this finale before I talk about the series as a whole. And you know what Maida and, and Key and PA works put together with Charlotte. This finale definitely subverted my expectations. I'm going to say that right now. It definitely subverted my expectations. I didn't expect the entire, the majority of the episode to center around you actually going around the globe and collecting every single ability from every ability user and the latent people who were just carriers and hadn't actually shown any signs of, of the ability yet. Yes, it was kind of montage-esque. Still lasted pretty much the whole episode. And I'm not gonna lie, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. It wasn't what I was, I was expecting a time skip. Yes, it was up in the air as to how long it fucking took him to do all that. I'm going to say at least had to take him six months. I want to put it in the year range, but his hair really didn't grow that much. So I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know right now. That's neither here nor. I'm going to bracket that right now. Seeing him, you know, go off on this venture and actually how trying it was. It was fucking awesome to see all of these different abilities and the weight that it put on him. And, you know, him slowly losing his sanity to the point where, you know, he it had to have been some amount of time. That some, some significant amount of time for him to be known around the globe as the Shinigami, the one-eyed Shinigami, going in, stealing powers from her, just going and fucking fiending whole armies. Dude, they launched an RPG at the man! Like, it's, he stands like it's nothing, dude. He Just to see the weight that it puts on him, he can't sleep, the various abilities coalescing together was fucking awesome to see at the same time, just kind of hearkening back to when he was, you know, spiraling into despair after losing Ayumi, and he starts to entertain ideas of even becoming God and taking over the world and everything, and the one thing that anchors him is his promise with now, even when he forgets everyone and everything, he even forgets now herself. And I was surprised that he, he uh, like, he didn't even remember Ayumi, dude. I mean, this is going to something remember I mean. But that showcases on the same token how genuine his feelings were for now. But I'll say this. The feels in that the little memo pad that she gave him just kept him centered ultimately and kept him focused on the goal. Like, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was fucking awful. I thought, I thought it was cool. I'm not going to fucking lie. It tugged at the heartstrings. It really did. And the ending, even though that's not what I anticipated, nor is it honestly what I would have wanted I can't say I'm not happy because I genuinely love these characters and to see them get this happy and even though you does not remember shit even though he doesn't remember anything you know to see them all alive and well and together rest in peace Kumagami you know the world has been purged of all of the ability users everyone's safe we get an actual happy end and also, I mean, that's because PA Works is involved with the project. You know, they're not going to let Key and, and Maya take it too far. Take it too, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Whoever came up with the idea to have a happy end like that, I'm fine with it, dude. I'm perfectly fine with it. But I think the tragic end would have been more impactful. Like, no lie, if you had died after that fiend just looking to get the bounty shot him a couple times in the back after he collected that last ability, and it just ended with him. He died. He had all the abilities. He was already been sad as fuck, you know, not being able to return and be with now because I shipped them heavy. It's fucking, it's too real right now. I'm happy that it ended that way. But ultimately, I think it would have had more impact and gave the series a more conclusive end. Because what happens with centering the entirety of the episode on Yu's journey, ultimately deciding to do that and it's because it's a, it's really a result of the series being spread thin overall 13 episode core so many so much going on so much potential with this series insane amount of potential dude it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous and a lot of plot points and a lot of developments and a lot of what it could have been fell short because it was spread so thin with so many things going on. It relied heavily, the series relied heavily, I'm not going to lie, it made for an epic ride, and it was so much fun week after week speculating into what was happening, theory crafting, everything like that, but it relied heavily on unexpected twists and destabilizing the, the current environment that has been positioned in the world and that's taken place up to that point, you know, a lot of different characters all over the place, and they tried to, you know, wrap things up too quickly. If this had been 
a 24 episode series or even a 15 to 16 episode series i think they could have done a better job ultimately with the pacing that way and it would have allowed for certain pl plot points to be touched you know not as much wasted potential with the series and not spreading itself so thin especially with what this finale tried to accomplish i'm like this would have been fucking cool last episode but on the finale you're gonna have all and it was it was awesome to see it really was i didn't expect it a lot of cool concepts just thrown into the finale as you you know garnered all these abilities and everything like that but ultimately sleeves this bittersweet taste in my mouth no tragic end which i'm not gonna say i'm a fiend for the tragic end and i'm really happy like i said for the characters but certain things like first of all saw that's what i gotta get into right now we're gonna start with saw because Yes, quickly we get that shot that, you know, now his brother is clearly recovering. They ultimately in this timeline, they ended up meeting Sala once again. He has an autograph in his hands. He's looking well. He's listening to some music on the, on, you know, the MP3 player. I'm guessing he's good. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We never get any explanation as to Sala's, you know, kind of power, whatever it was, whatever kind of catalyst she had or impetus that she had in, you know, reviving Yu's memories when he was at the ZN show because it was never explained why he was the only one whose memories faded from that all from listening to Sala's music, which if you want to make that connection, I guess you could argue and say there's no connection, but that plus the fact that in the last timeline, you know, now his brother was healed as well because of Sala's music, plus she's blind on some Shunsuke shit. I wanted some sort of explanation. And I never got to see her again, dude. We didn't even go back to the ZN show. We didn't get to see her. I mean, at least we saw it once. But here's the thing. I mean, I, I don't know. There's no, it's not like she had the ability now. And I would say because she's blind, she lost the ability. So I wanted. I always wanted to know what was up with that. I feel like that's something that fell short. I think that the episodic nature in the beginning, while it did build up our main cast of characters, lit, you know, early on, since Yusa, Misa, and Takujo really didn't get much play after things started happening with Aimee's death and then, you know, switching the timeline and everything like that, a lot of that development fell short. And yes, it really showcased the world, the different abilities kind of got us into it, but for a 13-episode series, I think it dragged on and... The, the shift between that kind of pacing to the very fast-paced, hyper twist after twist after crazy shit going down epic moments was a bit jarring and also contributed to the series spreading itself thing. But ultimately, I will say this. I enjoyed the shit out of Charlotte. I enjoyed the shit out of Charlotte. PA Works, Key, Jumaida. I, I have to applaud him. I have to applaud him, dude, because what might have put together the amount of concepts in this series... You know, the writing was not his best, but it was still quite good. And the animation and the art and these characters, most of all, were fucking incredible. I love these characters, and that's why I can't even be mad at the happy end, because I feel good. Like, like, like I've said three times already, I feel happy for them that everything turned out moderately okay. But I call BS on the fact that Shunsuke just showed up with the, with the helicopter, you know, evac, out of nowhere, he's in the middle of Shanghai, just gets a, right after he gets the last ability, he's about to be shot by this hour. Nobody else has any, you know, abilities. Nobody else can contact him. Get, I, I mean, granted, they've probably been hearing about this, you know, this one-eyed Shinigami going around all over the world and stealing abilities. They could have tracked him that way. But here's the thing. How is he living a peaceful life after that? After everybody knows who the fuck he is, he has this bounty on his head unless what? Did he... Did they go through, did he erase everybody's memories somehow, broad scale, by combining different powers together? I don't fucking know. I have no idea. There's just a lot of things left open-ended. I mean, they sealed off the Misa and Yusa story, but I think that that lacked overall development. I mean, it was touching as fuck last episode. I fucking love Misa, so it was amazing. Takujo didn't get enough play with the series. The Shunsuke cast didn't get enough play. I wanted more of both timelines and more insight in how that intersected. It just really spread them because there was so much potential, so much going on from the abilities to the depth to the characters to, you know, the relationships and various concepts and things going on with the timelines. So many things going on that a lot of that I just wanted to know so much more about. And I think it spread itself thin because there wasn't enough time and the pacing was kind of disrupted between the first half of the series and the second half of the series. Not that like I'm saying I didn't enjoy every single episode of Charlotte, because I did. From beginning to end, it's been a fun-ass ride. I've enjoyed every single episode. I've looked forward to every single episode. And it's still in my top five series that I've watched this season, straight up. But like I said last week, 
everything hinged on how they handled this final episode and ultimately this final episode was not able to solve the, pro the pacing problems that played the series ultimately and a lot of wasted potential that is inherent in the series because you couldn't touch all of those plot points in such a small scape of time. So ultimately taking the whole finale up of with Yu's journey, which was amazing to see, like I said, showcasing his mentality, really giving him a great closing character development and making, you know, establishing him as a great MC dude. His relationship with now fucking beautiful. I love every single character for the most part that was in this series and it was awesome to see, but using this whole episode on that. I don't know about that dude. I don't know. I don't I think that's too much to do with that scenario. And yeah, that's just that's just how I feel right now. That's just how I feel. So ultimately, Charlotte, I don't know. I don't know what I, I think what I need to do is I need to watch it again as well. I need to watch it again from the very beginning and just marathon it straight through because I need that perspective on it where I just see how it lines up episode by episode. So I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off on giving it a final score. I'm gonna hold off on giving it a final score. But Ultimately, I enjoyed the series. I would say that anywhere, based on animation quality alone and the characters and how, how much I enjoyed the characters and just the, the general scenario of the story, I would give it, you know, 7.5, 8 out of 10 easily. I, I'm probably going to put it at 8 out of 10 right now, but that could either go down or go up depending on my rewatch. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on a final score for Charlotte. But ultimately, did I enjoy this finale? Yes. It was interesting as fuck. That whole just huge journey throughout the episode really struck me, but it felt out of place at this stage. It kind of blocked off and precluded a lot of stuff going on, and there's just a lot of open Like, it's all good though. It's all good. Like, how he got his I means alive. UX now happens. They're fucking OTP. They're together. It's all good. You know, he couldn't go back in time to say, and, and that's the thing, when he got the healing ability, he could heal the eye because he found the other ability user and, and didn't channel Kumagami like I speculated. He got the ability, the healing ability, he could have healed his eye and used Shunsuke's time traveling ability once again. Ultimately, I respect the fact that they didn't do some hack shit like that because that would have, first of all, there's no time to go down that route again. It would have even been more rushed than what they did with this finale to begin with, okay? But... You know, the very fact that his resolve was this is the way, this is what Kumagami died for, in a sense, to allow this to happen, to save everyone else. And if he goes back in time, there's no guarantee that it's going to happen like this once again. And then something else might happen. If you've watched, if you know anything about time travel, there's always it's straight up butterfly. There's too many inconsistencies that you can't account for and changing the timeline once again if you've seen Stein Gate, if you've seen Madoka Magica, if you even saw the 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 time leap in this series, the one that took place, there's variables that, that, that are altered and you can't say this ultimately for the world and what was gonna happen to save all of these individuals from this this disease and these abilities and people coming after them because of it and all the violence and all the crazy shit that was happening as a result of it. You saw people, you know, being utilized by foreign armies and whatnot. They had child soldiers you, you trying to craft their abilities and whatnot. You know, just a bunch of fucking crazy shit going on, dude. And ultimately, what you did was an incredible feat. Yes, it seemed rush. I don't, I wanted I really would have loved to get a timetable on things. And if his hair had grown noticeably then I would have been okay with it. But it doesn't seem like it was more than a year, but at the same time, the Shinigami spread, shit spread so quickly. I don't know, I'm rambling at this point, but here's the thing, here's the thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm done. I've said pretty much everything I want to say over and over again. Charlotte, June Maida, Key and PA Works deserve a round of applause. Ultimately, in the way that Angel be Beats, you know, spread itself thin, you know, Charlotte ended up spreading itself thin that way as well. And I don't think it's June Midas' fault at all, um, in all honesty. And I really enjoy the series overall, nonetheless. So I really have to, before the year is done, I'm going to rewatch Charlotte and just, you know, sit down at Marathon because I want to see it from that perspective. See, I've done that with Angel Beats many a time as well. So I, I think I'm going to end up loving this series regardless. Still top five of this season for me personally. And I enjoyed this finale despite its problems and how the series kind of spread itself thin overall. It was an incredible ride. So much fun. Visually stunning. OST is fucking good. I, I need that OST. Did the ending with the fucking piano track. The feels just seeing them all together. I was like, yo, this is hype, right? And the Zian shit, dude. Like, it was just... 
Desp over despite everything, despite the problems, it was an enjoyable ride. So that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts on this finale and on Charlotte as a whole. And I'm out. Peace.